Hey guys, it's me, Vicki, again from XBeam. In this video, I'm going to get you up to speed on an important practice in cybersecurity called incident response. I'm not just going to tell you what it is, but also how to create an incident response plan. Stay tuned to the end, where I'll share some key gaps and plans that in our experience have caused lots of angst and wasted time. Before we get started, remember to subscribe to the Exabeam channel for new explainers and demos every week. Make sure to hit the bell so you get notified when we publish. Incident response, or IR, is a structured methodology for handling security incidents, breaches, and cyber threats. A well-defined incident response plan allows you to effectively identify, minimize the damage, and reduce the cost of a cyber attack while finding and fixing the cause to prevent future attacks. During a cybersecurity incident, security teams will face many unknowns and a frenzy of activity. In such a hectic environment, they may fail to follow proper incident response procedures to effectively limit the damage. Clear thinking and taking a pre-planned incident response steps can prevent many future unnecessary problems. A good place to start your plan is the NIST Computer Security Incident Handling Guide. It's the holy grail of IR plan how -tos. The plan should follow the phases as NIST defines them. These are preparation, planning in advance how to handle and prevent security incidents, Detection and analysis, which encompasses everything from monitoring potential attack vectors to looking for signs of an incident, to prioritization, containment, eradication, and recovery, which is developing a containment strategy, identifying and mitigating the hosts and systems under attack, and having a plan for recovery. And lastly, post-incident activity, which is reviewing the lessons learned and having a plan for evidence retention. You may iterate between detection and analysis, containment, eradication, and recovery. This will depend on the scope of an infection or breach. Also, when an incident is over, make sure to take lessons learned and update your plan. A crucial part of incident response is the team. It's really important that the team is cross-functional. It's more than just a security issue. You should have a team leader or executive sponsor who does budgets and communication to executive staff, an incident manager, the person in charge during an incident, a lead investigator, who's an analyst or incident responder, someone from communications or PR to deal with communications, someone from legal to approve messaging, understand disclosure laws, and deal with fallout, and someone from HR for any employee issues. Last is the technology used to automate your containment, eradication, and recovery. Let's call it remediation. It's last because you need to know the process you want to follow before you automate it. it sounds obvious, but some people jump the gun. This key technology is called SOAR, Security Orchestration Automation and Response. This is a newer SOC tool that coordinates data collection and remedial actions you take among all your security products you own. Best-in-class SOC teams have predefined playbooks to deal with common events like malware or phishing. As promised, here are a few mistakes that we've seen that you can avoid. First, write down specifically how you'll communicate. Phone, email, Slack? What if your network is down due to something like a DDoS attack? It sounds basic, but we've experienced situations where half the team was on a conference bridge and the other on Slack. Both were waiting for each other. Second, have all your communications to employees, customers, and partners pre-written and approved. Social media, emails, website banners. Have it in the can and ready to go for common scenarios like breaches or outages. You don't want to be chasing down your CEO and legal team at all hours of the night when an event happens and you need to communicate. Last, practice, practice, practice. Hold what are called tabletop exercises. Run through who does what in your plan, top to bottom. This will help you shake out any problems. I hope that was helpful. We really just scratched the surface. Start writing your plan today. I've put a link in the notes to a blog post with examples of templates that you can use. There are also several videos on SOAR if you want to see how these tools work. Feel free to ask any questions you have in the comments below and I'll answer. And if you like what you saw, please like the video and subscribe to our channel below.